Have you ever had one of those days where nothing was going right and you just wanted the world to revolve around you? I had one of those days recently and in the midst of my whining and complaining to my husband, a thought suddenly hit me. He must increase, I must decrease. And I remember doing a Bible study a few years ago on that very topic, he must increase but I must decrease, in the book of John chapter 3. And John gives us the perfect example of having Christ increase in us and we decrease to our sinful nature, to our pride, to our complaining, and we glorify God and we magnify God and we uplift Him above everything that we're going through. So in John chapter 3, John the Baptist is going full force, baptizing people left and right, and he has disciples helping him. And then they hear about the ministry of Jesus and how people are starting to go to Jesus and his disciples to be baptized. And John's disciples were not happy. They took their eyes off Jesus. And this is how John responded to his disciples. He was full of joy, not jealousy. And he was relaying that to his disciples. John saw his ministry as a privilege, a privilege to do anything that God has asked him to do. Well, we know that in the physical realm, when we grow, we increase in size. But in the spiritual realm, when we grow, we actually decrease. Why? Because God is increased. He's increased in our thoughts. He's increased in our prayers, increased in our words. He's increased in our faith. He's increased in every area of our walk with Him. And we're to be childlike in our faith, not childish in our walk with God, because we want spiritual maturity. God wants us to have spiritual maturity. Therefore, He must increase in us. How much we pray, how much we read His Word, how much we talk about Him to others, how much we talk about Him to ourselves, how much we talk to Him, those are ways that God can increase in us. And you know what happens when God is increasing in us and our sinful nature is decreasing? He then turns around and increases things in us. In Isaiah 40, 29, he increases our strength. In Proverbs 9, 9, he increases our learning. In Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his peace, there shall be no end. In Isaiah 29, 19, he increases our joy in him. But best of all, in 1 Thessalonians 3, 12, the Lord makes us to increase and abound in love one toward another. So how can Christ increase in you today and you decrease? I encourage you, let Jesus be increased in your life and you be decreased so that you can continue to grow in the Lord and influence the world around you. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and until next time, goodbye.